dresses But that blood had never burned in her veins Now I hear she's got a house of a baby And a style she's trying to maintain Darkness on the edge of town There's a darkness on the edge of town Well, everybody's got a secret, son they got something that they just can't face Some folks they spend their whole lives just trying to keep it They carry it with them every step that they take So someday they'll just cut it loose Cut it loose and let it drag them down It's rock and roll. Uh, that is darkness from uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's opening uh, concert, uh, which happened exactly 20 years ago this past uh, September 2nd. So thought I'd spot like that to open the show and uh, play another couple songs from there. And uh, we're going to morph into uh, uh, Bruce and uh, his association with Chuck Berry, since there's an interesting story to tell from that uh, Rock Hall of Fame concert. And uh, then I think we're going to go into, uh, I got one unusual song right in the middle of the uh, uh, grouping today. And then we'll play some work songs because it is what, Wayne? 
Labor Day. Labor Day. I'm sitting here with Wayne Boyker from the Beatles. So you guys were all kind of talking together <laughs> earlier. I got in on the uh, I did. I did the party Beatles. late. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a Beatles show. You know Beatles, so you gotta you gotta talk. I can chime in. Uh, I know a couple things. Well, yeah, a couple yeah, things. Well, so does Mark. So I'll get you guys all on my show and see what you know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did see the thing over at the Marcus. So and uh, yeah, that the was, Springsteen that was... and I movie, which was very interesting. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so we're gonna hit on all. Uh, sorts of subjects here today and uh, it is a hot steamy labor day with uh, looks like more rain coming but not as of yet which is good so i can't play my rainy day monday thing that i always (laughs) (laughs) so anything new and exciting well (laughs) well there's other things behind the scenes but uh Missed at the dog and suds. Yes. Uh, yeah, we were a little busy. But I, I know that you there was a, a death in the family. I know you had things to do. I had uh, an interesting week, folks. I had my grand first grandchild born on uh, one day, and I lost my brother in law the next day. It was just a, uh, uh, like you say, the circle of life. It was just a strange series of events. And but, tomorrow's your birthday. And tomorrow I turn fifty five. Well, I should have played the Beatle thing for you. Yeah. All right. Well, some other time. Next year. It's okay. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what I want to do, uh, like. I said i'm going to get to um, a few songs uh the e street band also backed up jerry lee lewis at this show and uh they played a couple of great uh, covers of his songs so let's hear those next it's great balls of fire and whole lot of shaking i think it's my my pleasure to bring out now one of my One of my all-time heroes, the one, the only, the man that doesn't play rock and roll, he is rock and roll, Jerry Lee Lewis. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Great to, uh, to be here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame opening here in Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Jerry Lee Lewis. Thank you, Bruce. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. You met your love, drive a man insane. You broke my wheel. What a thrill. I said, coming in this race and whoop, balls of fire. I like the love of the body to body. And then you came along and whoo, and honey, I changed my mind. Balls of fire, kiss me, baby. Feels good, oh, the baby. Hey, girl, you let me love you like a lover should. You're fine, so kind. I'm gonna tell this world that you're mine, 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 mine. I'm gonna keep my nails and my feet on my ground. I'm getting nervous, but it sure is fun. Come on, baby, drive me crazy. Goodness gracious, what calls the fire? You're fine, so kind I'm gonna tell this world that you're mine, 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 mine I see my nails and I flip on the bomb Real nervous and the show is fine Come on, baby, driving me crazy Goodness gracious, woo, balls of fire Thank you, thank you Thank you, ladies and gentlemen We're gonna get wound up here, I guarantee you Thank you. God bless you. I would love to do a song for you that we recorded back in about 1957 for Sun Records called A Whole Lot of Shaking Going On. Come on over, baby. A whole lot of shaking going on. Chicken in the barn. Woo, honey, 
can shake it one time for me Oh, well, the hell of hot to come on over, baby Oh, a lot of shaking going on Easy, baby, shake it Yeah Honey, shake it one time for Bruce and the boys They like it too Now, what you say, let's get together and get it one time One time Rock and Roll Hall of Fame opening concert there in Cleveland in September 95. And, uh, of course, that's uh, Bruce and the uh, E Street Band backing up uh, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, who is 79. We were looking up 79 years old for him and Chuck Berry, 88. So they're still hanging in there. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Jerry Lee's still kind of playing around. I don't think Chuck plays as much uh, anymore. He's... <laughs> He's getting a little up there. Um, but what I found interesting as I was doing some of my research here for uh, the show is um, I came across and I came across a couple of stories. Um, there's always this old story about uh, when Bruce was uh, very young and in one of his first bands and they got to back Chuck Berry up at one of the shows out on the you know on the East Coast somewhere. Um, so I'm going to have Bruce talking about that. But first I got Nils talking about this show and um, about uh, what happened with the last song that they backed him on which was uh uh rock and roll music now they played um they played two songs with him johnny be good which i got coming up right after this little uh, uh chat part um i cannot i could not find for the life of me the song that he describes uh i think it was so bad that they didn't even want it getting out there and i've been looking and looking and like i said maybe one of these days i'll track it down somehow but it uh uh they did rock and roll music and chuck berry messed him up so bad that uh, supposedly it came out really bad so like i said here's nils lofgren talking about that and then we'll uh, we'll play johnny be good and we'll be back you know it's funny i was never in a backup band for chuck berry and um bruce springsteen tells the story he was in one of them uh, ronnie newmeyer a bass player friend of mine did one everyone who says the story is chuck shows up has to get paid first never communicates with the band just starts playing and you have to follow along He's not known for his, uh, you know, bedside manner. And uh, one of the great moments, we were at the Rockwell Hall of Fame. The East Street Band had been broken up basically since 89. Uh, and 92 or 3, when the hall opened, we played. We backed up Jerry Lee Lewis. It was great. We played a few East Street songs, which was great. And uh, just that whole day there, watching Al Green sound check was one of the highlights of my life. And he had to be there. But... That's another story. So anyway, at the end, Chuck comes out. We're backing up Chuck Berry. And I think you have, um, you know, G.E. Smith with his great band. You have Steve Van Zandt, Chrissy Hine, Bruce Springsteen, myself, two or three other amazing guitarists. And Chuck's out there. I got an acoustic guitar. I'm just trying to get something together. It's real free form. And again, we're just going to do something, next, you know, off the cuff. And Chuck, you know, again, not too communicative. He's standing there and he starts playing. Well, we're all pros, so we start following along. Somehow, a minute or two in, he like shifts the song and gears and a key without talking to us. Now we all, okay, we're, we're pros, right? So we're all like trying not to make a train wreck, and it's tricky, but okay, what key is he in? Let's start playing there. Then he shifts keys again, and he shifts keys four or five times. I can only imagine to, to mess with us. I, I can't imagine why else this happened. And we're all looking around at each other, like the cast of characters and the backup band. These are pros, decades in. And we are making these horrible sounds collectively in front of a stadium sold out. And we're looking at each other like, this can't be happening, right? 
we're not doing creating this thing we're listening to. Yes, we are. And at the height of it, when everyone, no one has an idea how to fix this, Chuck looks at us all and starts looking at us, duck walking off the stage, away from us. He leaves the stage, leaves us all out there playing in six different keys with no band leader, gets in a car and drives away. Now, if that's not rock and roll, I mean, and I love Chuck Berry, but man, you know, it's funny, all these years and stories of, did you ever back up Chuck? No, no, no. Well, I got my chance. And man, it was, uh, it was everything that was promised and more. It was so bad <laughs> that on the ride back, we kind of started talking like this, and I was in a van, and there's a lot of other good stuff going on that day, but Bruce and I started talking about that because I don't think the two of us, we've been in a lot of clubs together and jammed separate from the E Street Band, and I don't think the two of us have ever participated in something that god-awful musically since we were probably 13 or 14. I didn't even start playing until I was 14. And the fact that we did that in a stadium in an event like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame opening, it was just so insane and absurd and bad that we started, we got into those laughing jags where you can't stop laughing. We were howling, and then when we could barely talk, we'd explain the another awful thing that happened with Chuck as our leader, and we just, just couldn't, it was just hilarious and awful all at once. Johnny, be good. 
at least uh, Chuck uh, didn't leave him hanging there. It would be the next song that I guess he left him hanging. But uh, a funny story. Uh, and again, I can't find audio of it anywhere. So it, maybe they, maybe they, <laughs> the, the Rock Hall just got rid of it. I, I can't figure out why else. But because uh, it, maybe it really truly was that bad. Maybe there's bootlegs floating around out there of it somehow, some way. I'll have to see if I can dig it up. All right. So we're going to finish off this segment with uh, about the Rock Hall and um, uh, their little association with the great Chuck Berry. And uh, this is Bruce talking about uh, him backing up Chuck. And then instead of playing, obviously, that song I can't find, I came up with the um, them covering the Chuck Berry classic, You Never Can Tell, which I played on here before. But it's a great version, him getting the band, uh, instructing the band how to play it. And it's a, it's a great cut from, um, I think it was working on a, I think it was working on a dream tour. I'll look that. I'll look that up before I come back. Anyway, this is uh, Bruce, and then you can never, you never can tell. About five minutes before the show was time to start, the back door opens and he comes in. He's by himself, and uh, he's got a guitar case, and that was it. And I guess he pulled up in his own car or something. Never anybody with him. And he comes into the band, you know. And, and I said, well, great, so it's about, she said, we're going to go on. I said, well, Chuck, he said, like, what? You know, what songs are we going to do? She said, well, we're going to do some Chuck Berry songs. <laughs> That's all he says. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Got that horns?
Hi, this is Liam. You're listening to WRLRLP FM 98.3. That's my buddy. Little Liam. Liam. Little Liam. <laughs> Someday, uh, someday I have to find him. Yeah, he'll uh, probably be an old man, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you enjoying your Labor Day weekend? Well, you except know, you're laboring today. Uh, well, it's just like every other Monday. So I guess it's, so. It's fine, but the weather's good. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm doing fine. Good, yeah. good, good. I hope yeah. everyone's relaxing out there, enjoying their Monday off. I unfortunately went in for a few hours this morning, but uh, that's all right. It doesn't mm-hmm. bother me. you got to be somewhere. That's right. So, uh, uh, like I said, we were spotlighting the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, opening concert uh, done uh, 20 years ago this past weekend. And um, so now I thought it would play a kind of unusual song that I've had sitting in the in, in the vaults waiting. Um, remember that funky dude that sang... Uh, Jesse's girl. Yeah. Remember? Uh, what was his name? The Rick Springfield. Springsteen? Rick, was it? Rick, Rick no. Springstone? Rick, Rick Spring, Sting? Yeah, could be. Something like that? Spring something. Well, he got awfully upset. I, Ricky did back in the early 80s. And he uh, wrote a song about my boy Bruce. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he's uh, apparently uh, got very irritated. Uh, uh, but I, as, again, as I'm doing a little research, found out that the the uh, anvil swung swung both ways because uh, somebody asked Bruce at one point, "Well, what, what's what's the one question that makes you the most angry?" He says, "Go ahead and ask me about Jesse's girl." <laughs> so I guess uh, well, there you go. Yeah, but uh, one of the lines in this is uh, he said, "I thought Born to Run was one of your best." Oh, wait a minute, man. Who do you think I am? He answered, Mr. Springsteen, you're a famous man. <laughs> and, of course, it was Mr. Springfield. So I wanted to play that one. I thought it was kind of funny. And then we're going to go into some work songs for Labor Day. So uh, let's hear Mr. Uh, uh, Springfield whine a little bit. <laughs> doctor, doctor, you got to help me, yeah. you got to make it right for me. It seems this other man's name has been following me around And it just won't let me be You see, I got this name and he's got this name too And though, well, they're kind of close Only a blind, crazy fool would think I was him It's like saying green is blue But let me tell you, brother Started being a bother When he made the cover of Time Magazine She liked my music, thought it was fine She said, let's make love, your place or mine And in the middle of the passion, I was on the borderline When she called out a name, but it wasn't mine She called me Bruce, 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 Bruce. I can hear her calling Bruce, 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 Bruce I can hear her calling Bruce, 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 Bruce. I can hear her, my name is Rick, I'm gonna stick it to you back And as he pulled a piece of paper for me to sign from his vest He said, I thought Born to Run was one of your best Oh, wait a minute, man Who do you think I am? He answered, Mr. Springsteen, you're a famous man He called me Bruce, 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 Bruce. I can hear him calling Bruce, 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 Bruce. He called me Bruce, 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 Bruce I can hear him My name is Richard, gonna hit you to your back
Jason Wayne off the air asked me, you think that really happened? I said, yeah, I think it really did. So, uh, what are you going to do? Springfield, Springsteen, Springfield. Yeah, I can, I can imagine it probably did. I, I was, I was telling him because the, uh, the, their names in the record bins were always one right in front of the other. So I can't, I can only imagine. And they were young at the, that song was written in the early eighties. So, uh, um, I don't know. Do you remember it? I don't. It was it was like early, like around. I think it was actually came out before Jesse's Girl, uh, but it was just uh, stuck somewhere for the longest time. And I think they reissued it like right when he got big around Born in the USA. So, anyway, um, so we're gonna go and do my little salute now to Labor Day. Uh, I've got one, two, three, four lined up, so we'll try to squeeze them all in. And um, he's the working guy of rock and roll, supposedly, and uh, he's going to do a little working for your love. This is Stockholm of 07. I'll work for your love. from Stockholm in uh, December of 07. I'll work for your love off of Magic. Magic. 
uh, okay, so again, we're, we're focusing on work songs for a Labor Day weekend. And uh, next one up, he's doing some more working, this time uh, at Pink Pop Festival in 2009. This is Working on a Dream.
a Pink Pop Festival back in 2009, and he's still working on that dream. And Tyler Lang walked in. He's going to have a lovely show lined up for everybody, Garage Noise. Another uh, fantastic show. Let's turn everybody on. We had a big party in here before you. you oh, I, I must have missed most of it. Oh, no, uh, you missed it. Yeah, Ray, but... come on. My shows are always an awesome party. That's right. That's why you are the award-winning Garage Noise. Oh, you're too much. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that Bruce Springsteen, he knows how to command a room. Yes, he does. Next, he's going to work on a highway. Oh, that's one of my favorites. He was working on Dream. He's been working for your love. Now he's working on a highway. The guy always work, 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 work. Hey, hardest working man in show business. <laughs> it's like that. It's like that. That piece out of Blazing Saddles. Work, 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 work. I love that part. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna work on a highway, and then he's gonna be back at the factory again for the ah. last last final song. So let's uh, let's get working on a highway. This is a good one. This is from uh, Hard Rock Calling. I want to try to get both of these in before you go on. So Hard Rock Calling, London, 2013.
right. How could you not tap your toes to that? All right. Working on a highway. That was, uh, uh, again, from London Hard Rock Calling Show. Uh, I'm going to do one more little quick, quick, quick song, and then Tyler's going to come on with his garage noise and uh, wreck you all out till 7 o'clock. And um, don't know if you got someone behind you or not. Rosenberg, is he uh, on tonight? Should we? No? Yes? No? Maybe not. Maybe no Matt Rosenberg tonight. So uh, stay tuned for <laughs> for whatever. You should have gone. You should do two hours. Maybe. Why not? Hey, hang out. Hang out. Play some tunes. Relax. Whatever. Play it by ear, which is all we ever do. Yeah, I know you're not on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, uh, Bruce talked m- m- at length about his father and his father's life and how uh, um, he thought it was a miserable, not nah, a miserable, but it was not the happiest way to go through life going into that that same old dreary factory day after day after day. I, my dad did it, actually, but uh, um, kind of rose up through the ranks and it wasn't he wasn't running a machine for 30 years, but uh, anyway. Anyway, uh, he wrote a song about uh, what he felt his father's life was like going into that factory every day. This is from the Paramount Show in 2009. You've been listening to Getting Loose with Bruce on WRLR every Monday at 5. So uh, uh, tune in and uh, hear some great Bruce and E Street music and uh, hopefully enjoy yourself. So anyway, we'll uh, talk to you all next week. This has been Ray Zirkel, and uh, this is Factory. Factory wears and blows and rises from bed, puts on his clothes. Man takes his home, walks out in the morning light. It's a work, it's a work, just a work in life. Through the mansions of fear, through the mansions of pain. See my daddy walk through those factory gates in the rain. Factory takes us here. Factory gives them life. It's a work, it's a work, just a work in the life. the day factory whistle cries and walk through these gates with death in their eyes and you just better believe boy somebody's gonna get hurt tonight it's a work it's a work just a work in life it's a work it's a work just a work in life